Hello everyone, welcome back to the Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion comment. <laughs> you're you're about to say it. <laughs> nope, you cannot prove that. Um also if you looked in the bath background there, there was the blobfish. Uh which I don't know. I just I find it funny that he exists in this game. What are those mysterious objects behind behind them? Those weird disc shaped things. Blue ray like obviously vinyls. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I find it funny that vinyls are now more popular than CDs. I don't I don't get it. Well, it's because... I think there's a Walkman in the background for this one too at some point. Well, it's because like it, it, it's, if you're gonna listen to digital audio, you might as well just play it off of a an MP3, MP3 player. player. You'll get better you know, quality that way, and it's easier. You don't have to carry discs around if you want like lossless quality vinyls are good for that um oh there are those are walkmans in the background oh my god I feel weird like that would reference weird, weird, weird reference that they would reference sony in that though walkmans <laughs> yeah walkmans are specifically a sony brand <laughs> walkmans <laughs> that's not how it's <laughs> you're supposed to call it a walkman not a walkman <laughs> Walk you know, John, he, he, he's a spider man. He's not John P. Spiderman. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't know about Christopher Walken. Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> I play your music files for you in your ears. <laughs> yeah, it's like if that's man. very clearly what they're trying to be. Like you can see one really clearly right now. Like the CD shape and every. Oh my god. That makes me feel like I'm nine years old. God. I don't know if I like it, though. Well, I mean, it's not like Sony Walkman Walkman was, like, the only CD player around. It wasn't, kind of but, design. again, the, the Walkman was more a cassette player in the 80s. But it's kind of one of those, you know, how everyone calls it an iPod. Everyone called it an iPod for a long time, even yeah. though it was just a generic MP3 player. Well, they That's did. kind of what it was. They did also do CD players with the Walkman brand. No, I know. I'm just saying the Walkman name kind of just became a de facto term for a portable music player, even though that's technically not the case. <laughs> yeah, kind of like how some people will say Kleenex instead of tissue, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or, um, I don't know, they'll call... In some places, they'll just call it a Coke, even if it's a Pepsi. Yeah. Believe yeah. it or not. You know, nobody ever asks if Coke is okay. They only ask if Pepsi's okay. <laughs> Depend it de depends on the region. Uh, like It's like, I think it's like in the south where they'll do that. Uh, call, oh, yeah, because Coke, well, Coke is based here in Atlanta, so... Well, I mean, it happens here, too. Like, I live in Boston, and if I'm, like, at a restaurant, and I'm like, can I get a Coke for my drink? They'll say, is Pepsi okay? But, like, um, I'm actually specifically asking for a Coca-Cola beverage. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> All right, let's see. I don't know why the endpoints are pencils. Like, some of the mm. stuff I, I get, and some of it I just I kind of don't. But I'm also not hip with the kids. The Splatoon fan base is a lot. I feel like I'm an old man whenever I look up the Splatoon fan base. And well, because they're all like young teenagers. <laughs> yeah, it's like I saw a competitive player being like, oh, I'm old and washed up for Splatoon. And then I look at their profile and it's just like age 19. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Friggin' Daigo and stuff from the fighting games are like pushing 40, I think, at this point. It's like. Yeah, you're freaking kids. Stop. <laughs> oh, oh, this is my this is my favorite part of the entire game. Uh earlier we heard Marina's demo tape. Uh this is Pearl's demo tape. <laughs> where she just screams over and over in heavy metal. My other favorite thing is is that even though the Splatoon language is just gibberish noises, they do they still bleep they still out have... some of them at some point. <laughs> <laughs> And the track is called Bleepin' Dudes Are Bleepin' Sleep. <laughs> yeah. How can you not love Pearl? She's great. <laughs> it's, a, it's a foil to bounce off of others, sure. On her own. Yeah. So, I don't know if the hashtag speculation for the uh, idols in Splatoon 3 has started yet, but I'm going to throw it out here right now. My guess, they're octoling boys that emulate the K-pop phrase uh, craze. 
going it would be, on. It would be nice to get some, you know, boy idols for three. I, I mean, I think that it would just be a cool, like, difference because obviously uh, the Squid Sisters are supposed to be, like, your generic kind of Japanese idol band. And the Off the Hook, which is Pearl Marina from this game, kind of have a more Western poppy R&B kind of vibe to them. So I think doing a boy band and spe- I specifically want them to be like K-pop just because I think that would be really funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that would be a different kind of vibe for them to go as well. Um, yeah, agreed. Yeah, but we'll see how right or wrong I am when that actually happens. I don't know when we're going to get more Splatoon 3 info. I would suspect not probably for not. the rest of this year. I would say we'll get a September direct to clean up 2020. Get the last Smash character and stuff out of the way. And then Splatoon 3 will be kind of be the headliner for the Janu- generic January, February direct. Yeah. Also, if you That'd look in the guess. background, there's some Game & Watch Octopi uh, walking around <laughs> yeah. here, which is a cool little uh, reference. Reference. Yep. Definitely not suspicious to be finding blender parts. Definitely not. Okay. I'm sure it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... Uh, oh, oh yeah. This is also one of my favorite parts of the game. So, in the original Splatoon, you had an uh, uh, Inkling character uh, who you designed yourself. Um, but the game doesn't know what your inkling looked like. So instead, Captain Cuttlefish asks you, the Octoling, what Agent 3 looks like. <laughs> it's just like, uh. This reminds dude. me of Dragon Age Inquisition, where, uh, Hawk uh, appears as an NPC, but because Hawk was the protagonist of the second game, you basically had to redesign Hawk. <laughs> like,. Um, uh, everything from the personality type that you used to his or her physical appearance. <laughs> it's just really funny when it's other characters, <laughs> you know, it's just like, uh, what did they look like again? And I'm like, and Professor in, Oak, you don't know your grandson's name? In, in, uh, in Knights of the Old Republic 2, like one of the first characters that you talk to because they didn't have save imports for this game um references the protagonist of knights of the old republic one as a guy and you can correct him (laughs) and uh that's how you determine the uh uh, the first game's uh main character (laughs) also just as a just as a note about something i like in splatoon 3 um, in this game, you just had a boy or a girl option, and in Splatoon 3, you aren't, like, given a boy or girl option. You just have, like, dress, eye styles dress, and, and hairstyles. Yeah, do, do whatever you want, which is nice. Yeah, it's like, if I want to be have the boy eyes but the girl hair, I can do that, which is actually something that I would like to do, because when I'm playing Splatoon, I normally have the girl haircut with the two like little tentacles hanging down because I have long hair in real life and that's kind of the closest representation to that I can get. But I'm, I'm also, I'm a guy. So it always kind of felt weird picking the girl character. Um, so being able to like properly, like just have whatever you want is good. I just, I think most games, if there's not a story reason for it should give you the option to mix and match stuff like that. You know? And honestly, I think the whole, Guys choosing girl characters is a thing that has largely gone away because usually the girl characters get better designs anyway. <laughs> um, almost always. I'm trying to think of a Pokemon instance where the boy uh, had a better e- design than e- the girl. Ethan, Ethan looks better than uh, what's her name in Hard Gold Soul Silver. Uh, yeah, yeah. Although I still think Crystal, I think looks Crystal, better than Crystal gold. looks. Yeah, Crystal looks nice, but yeah, whatever her name is in Hard Gold Soul Silver, I think is kind of a weak design. Yeah, but like, um, I'm thinking even of a game where I like. Uh, I you see, I'm, I'm thinking like Pokemon was... Black and White and Black and White Two, 
the boys look okay in there, but the girls are just better. I think the name. I like, I like, uh, I like Hilbert in black and white. He's a, he's a really good design, but yeah, Hilbert's Hilbert just better. I think her name was Lyra, or am I thinking Lyra, of... something like that. Well, you know who I'm talking about, though. It's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the weird sort of farmer girl Hoop thing going bun on. Thing with the yeah suspenders, and it was weird. I don't know why they went with that design when they. Had uh, it was it, it looks like it looks like she was a farm girl and it's like what? Uh, you know I can't girl. even remember <laughs> what the boy looked like in Gen Six, like at all. Uh, uh, he had kind of the long, slightly longish hair to like his shoulders and the blue jacket. You know, it wouldn't be half as weird her looking like a farm girl if there were any hint of any farms at all in Kanto or Johto. But well, like, there, no, there is a there is a uh, mill tank one in uh, Johto. Yeah, it's just in a tiny root that I guess yeah, they kind of make it look more like a farm in Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver. But it's one of those, it's clear that she's not from there, so what's the correlation? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that that's one of those instances where, again, you were expected to fill in the gaps with your imagination I, I was uh, more, back I, in the day. I, I was more um, making fun of the early Pokemon worlds for not really being very cohesive. No, they... Um, yeah, I think... Johto and Kanto succeed as worlds kind of in spite of them not being cohesive is is the thing. Like, it doesn't really make an awful lot of sense how the world's laid out in a lot of ways, but it's just fun to explore because the layout's good. So it that doesn't really matter. Versus something like Gen 5 and Gen 7 in particular do a really good job at making their worlds make sense while also being fun to explore, at least for me. Um, I know that some people aren't a big fan of the island structure in 7, and I know that Gen 5 really kind of, especially in Black and White uh, 1, is hyper-linear, um, which some people don't really like, and I can totally understand both of those arguments. I just... Gen 5 is so good. I yeah. replayed a little bit of it it's, it's, a couple months back. It, it, it's so good, I'm actually scared of them get, make, getting a remake anytime remotely soon because I know they're not going to do a good job with it. Well, when did Alpha Sapphire in Ruby, Omega Ruby I come out? Wanna, I want to say six, seven years ago. Because um, I know that Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver came out 2010, 2009. Um, so if we assume mid-2000s for the Gen 3 remakes... I would say we're probably looking at like 2023 or four at earliest for a Gen Five remake. So no, I would say 2025 because it usually takes about four or five years. Because we're gonna get another, we'll get another generation before that. We'll probably get another sp major spinoff. Yeah, but think about it this way, Ryan. When the Gen Five remake happens, it'll be during an odd number generation, and as we know, odd generations in Pokemon are almost always better than even generations. You're not entirely wrong. Is the problem? <laughs> Yeah, of course, wow. every good rule needs an exception, and the exception is, is, Gen Gen, is Gen 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh. I mean, you know, I'm, I was actually really annoyed that uh, Gen 8 didn't introduce any new evolutions because every even number generation before that Dead. introduced new evolutions. And I'm like, yeah. why? Especially since they recognize Eevee's popularity now with the evolutions, like... Are you sure you didn't want to make another one to bank on the popularity of him? Like, you don't need to make, like, six. Just make, like, make like one. one or two. Yeah, one like, or two. I'm sure that a dragon evolution would Do sell well, cards yeah. and... Plushes and stuff. Think of all of the merch. I mean, like, that's all Shihara cares about these days, so... What? I will Honor. say that Pokemon merch is extremely high quality. Like, a lot of the time you pay a lot of money for video game merch and stuff, and the quality just isn't there. Like, they do go out of their way to make the Pokemon uh, plushies and, like, clothes and stuff legitimately very nice. But so. not the games. Weird. <laughs> hey -o. Well, I think we'll, we'll get there. Um, if Arceus does well, I think that will mm. go to show. I mean, listen, I'm going to at least try to be optimistic. And if I'm proven wrong, then, you know, uh, once bitten, go. twice shy, you, I guess. <laughs> you, you, you do you, I guess. I mean, I, I just, I hope, I'm going to hope at the very least that if Arceus does well, that goes to show that people want 
fully fleshed out things. And then maybe well, it, it's, can... it's not a matter of it doing well. It's whether or not they'll put the effort to make it good. Oh, uh, that, that that's the because that, that, that's that's the bigger that's the bigger issue because Pokemon games will pretty much do well almost regardless. Um, I guess what I meant in terms of do well is uh, critical reception uh, and fan reception that, well, on top. Well, that of, well, uh, well, that's up. That's up to Game Freak at this point. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So like, I'm gonna hope that I'm gonna hope that uh, Arceus does well. And I mean, I feel like such a dick for saying that I want the Gen Four remakes to not do well, because like that's saying that I want people who enjoy Gen Four to get a bad remake, which is not really what I want. I don't personally really like Gen 4 all that much, but I don't want a remake people have been waiting years for to not live up to their expectations. Like, cause that's just kind of a dickish thing to say. But at the same time, were the Gen 4 remake to do poorly and Arceus to do well, that sends a message of people want more ambitious stuff versus extremely extremely safe stuff which is the message i want game freak to get but i want to say it in a way that doesn't make me look like an asshole it's it, so. it, it's 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 easy to understand i don't really think a lot of people genuinely don't understand that idea it's basically the reason why final fantasy fans are constantly bickering over which games are better than uh, which other games is like people sometimes ask well, well why is there composition competition within the same franchise uh -huh. it's because people are arguing over which direction they want the franchise to go um yeah i feel like it's a little bit more pronounced in final fantasy though because stuff changes all the time yes is the big thing it really like, does if your favorite final fantasy is final fantasy 9 for example you basically have no guarantee that you'll ever get another game like that ever again. Uh, you know, versus if someone's favorite Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy X, like, I mean, granted, it might not be a similar, like, battle system or world, but you're probably more likely to get something with a similar vibe. Oh, we it. already did. It's called The Lord of the Rings of Third Age. What? <laughs> they pretty much just ripped off Final Fantasy X's entire battle system for that game. It's Is it any good? It is, kind of. It's a bit slower paced, and it's basically another one of those Lord of the Rings games where you're following not Boromir and not Arwen as they follow in the wake of actual Aragorn and actual Legolas. Um, <laughs> so it's a bit weird in that respect. Also, you fight the Eye of Sauron directly. I don't really know what they were smoking. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe they. Oh, th you know they were smoking that weird pot that they have in the in the Shire. It's called pipe weed. Thank you very much. And it's just straight up weed. <laughs> <laughs> it's tobacco. Yeah. But like that weird pot they have in the Shire. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. A lot of what Mar uh, Mary and Pippin are doing in the Lord of the Rings makes a lot more sense when you remember that they're just two stoners that happen to follow Frodo out of there. <laughs> oh. Uh, Pippin more so than Mary. Which uh, one was Pippin again? I don't remember. Yeah, the, the, the slower, dumber one. Is he the one who hung out with Eowyn a lot? Or is that... He was the one who went to Gondor. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Then. Mary and Pippin. They're like Chip and Dale. I can't tell them apart. Mary and Pippin <laughs> in the movies don't even resemble their book counterparts even slightly. So, um, just oh, they gonna... don't. I I've no. never read the books. Uh, in the books, they actually like cons they actually like conspire with Sam to arrange it so that they all leave the Shire together. So it's not like they just got picked up on the road like in the movies. Um, but the movies skip over most of the slow build up in the at the beginning of the book because yeah, it's already like four hours on. long as it is. 